Hi everyone, it's Tanya Gibbs and today I want to bring to you a mixed media layout process video featuring products from Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft. I am excited to announce that I have been selected as a member of their summer 2014 guest design team. So look for lots of tutorials. Today we're going to be using the mix and match uh, gelatos in the steampunk collection iced coffee, mix and match it, gelatos in the green collection in the pistachio color, gelatos double scoop snow cone, gelatos double scoop butterscotch. We're also going to use the stampers big brush artist pens in the green gold number 268, light flesh number 132, medium flesh number 131, may green number 120, and dark sepia number 175. Textural accents, the gel medium, the glass bead glitter gel, gesso, and the whipped spackle. So we're going to start off with the double scoop gelatos. This is the snow cone and the butterscotch. And then we're also going to use the pistachio gelato. And I'm going to apply the butterscotch directly to my uh, layout, my, my cardstock. This is just ivory cardstock from canvas core I'm just gonna rub some generously there and then add some water to it and a cosmetic sponge to blend it out uh, you can also use a baby wipe to do this the surface that I'm working with is unprepped it's it's just straight cardstock uh, you do want to be careful when you're rubbing it into the cardstock because depending on the type of cardstock you're using it could pill up just a little bit so be very gentle with your rubbing it doesn't take much pressure to rub these in uh, now we're going to start out we're going to come back with a layer of the snow cone double scoop gelato and again I'm wetting the surface using my same cosmetic sponge to work that color in and you can see how that snow cone color blends with the color of the butterscotch to give me a nice rich green uh, turquoise color and you can even use your fingers to rub this in once the surface is a little bit damp so uh, I'm just going to continue to work this color in and blending here and there uh, at this point I have no idea what direction I'm headed in I had this vision in my mind's eye and I, you'll see as this layout progresses that I end up going in multiple directions but I'm just going to keep applying color until I reach the effect that I'm looking for. Now I'm going to take the new uh, glass bead glitter gel and apply that right over the top of the blue area. A very little bit of this goes a long way. Uh, you can spread it just really super thin. It goes on white and it clears, it dries clear, but you do want to make sure that you um, do not use your heat tool on this. You want it to dry uh, naturally because it will blister uh, unless the blistered look is the look you're after. Uh, when this dries, the medium itself, the gel, dries very clear and then there's a nice texture from the glass bead and then the glitter has a nice iridescent greenish blue hue to it. So it's going to be perfect for my blue area. Now I'm applying some of that pistachio down at the bottom while I wait for the glass uh, the glitter glass bead gel to dry I'm going to work on uh, one of my accent pieces so I'm taking some gesso and just dry brushing that right onto that fence I'm going to do, apply this coat to the both sides I don't want a complete coverage because I do want that texture from the chipboard below then I'm going to take the mixed and matched uh, gelatos using the very new steampunk colors uh, I'm going to pull the iced coffee out of this packaging uh, the iced coffee has a is a really rich dark brown that kind of reminds me a little bit of an espresso and I'm going to apply that directly to my um, fence I've picked up that moisture there off of my mat onto that dry paper towel so I can use it to work the color into my uh, chipboard. This is going to give my my little fence a nice weathered look. So I'm going to apply that to both sides because um, at this point I don't really know what I want to do with the fence but I know that I want to be able to apply that to either side just in case. So now I'm taking the whipped spackle and I'm going to use the side of my palette knife and apply that along the shoreline there. Um, in case you haven't figured out yet, we're going to do a beach scene. So I'm following along the edge of that blue area. Uh, 
I struggle with white space and honestly this layout started out with this my vision was to have my let my photograph over the top of this area and leave the rest of it white um, as you can see from the opening photograph that didn't happen but um, I'm going to go ahead and apply my waves into inland a little bit I mean inside a little bit uh, and and I wanted that butterscotch to peek out from underneath that blue because uh, here on the Florida beaches the closer you get to the coastline you start seeing the ground below where the water's a little more shallow so that was my idea for that that's why you can see some of that brown peeking out now, now I'm going to use my Stampers Big Brush Artist Pen and the green gold and I'm going to apply it directly to the stamp. The stamp is called uh, Nantucket by Pink Paisley and I'm using the starfish. I'm stamping these onto a pre-prepped surface. I like to take some scrap paper sometimes and pre-gesso them so that they're ready to go. Now I'm going to pull out the light flesh number 132 and I'm going to uh, apply that color directly to this conch shell. The nice thing about these Stampers Big Brush pens is that they are made with India ink, which means that you can stamp them onto a prepped surface and they're completely blendable. If you allow them to dry, they're permanent. So what you see me doing here is applying the color to the stamp, stamping it. I'm going to make sure it's really dry. Then I'm going to come back with the exact same color and color over my already stamped image and, and blend out the color to give my conch shell some color. Now what happens is, is as I blend the color becomes lighter so I can still see the outline of my stamped image even though I'm using the exact same ink. So I think that's super cool. Then I'm going to come back with the medium flesh and I am going to add that into the whole of the um, conch shell and then around some of the crevices as well and that's just going to give me another uh, blendable color I really love that these pens blend so beautifully together uh, it really makes a really really interesting looking stamp uh, you, and you're not married to stamps always having a black color so once I have that completely done what I'm going to do now is take go back to my flush color and re-stamp that image over the top of that conch shell and that's just going to give me back my uh, contrasting edges now I did not stamp this perfectly right over the top but it doesn't matter because I'm going to come back and fussy cut it out and you will never know um, but I do love the way these two colors blended together to make my conch shells they turned out so beautiful Another great thing about these pens is they just clean up off your stamps so nicely. You just spritz the stamp with a little bit of alcohol and they brush right up. So uh, keep that in mind. Now once I've got those cut out I'm going to go back to my layout and I notice that the uh, gel has dried. Now you can really see that sparkle showing up and I've decided instead of fussy cutting out the stars I'm just going to stamp them directly onto my layout using that green gold color. Uh, I, I really love the way this looks. Uh, it gives a nice contrast against the butterscotch from the gelatos and uh, just not being too particular with where I put them realizing that I do still need to add a photo to this uh, and at this point I'm really trying to stay out of that negative space that's still left white uh, that's the best way I can do it and keep everything from uh, you know me filling up an entire page I worked in, work in small sections at one time so now I'm pulling out this netting that came from Halloween actually this is that cobweb netting it's the one that is cotton and I've just pulled it out it makes the best nautical uh, netting I think um, and it's really easy to work with awesome for your mixed media projects and I'm trying to plan placement for that fence still just not happy with it yet it, the idea hasn't struck me yet with what to do with it this is also from the same stamp set it's just a little script thing so I'm just stamping it all around again sticking with that green gold color um, I, and again I love how these clean up off of your uh, your uh, gel stamps because the cool thing about them is is even though it's permanent ink it is actually uh, water soluble until it dries so if you take a baby wipe and wipe them off they don't leave a residue on your stamps so I love it and uh, you know my uh, 
stampers big brush pens travel with me um, it's a lot easier than toting around a bunch of ink pads and they act like markers when they're not being ink pads <laughs> so now I'm just coming back and gluing down this netting and trying to find placement for everything um, you know working out the details here so I had forgot to turn the video back on to show you what I did here but uh, so I'm going to demonstrate it for you I took the big the double scoop gelato and the butterscotch and mixed it with the whipped spackle and and I ended up breaking that fence in half and then breaking that those pieces down too because on the beach no fence is ever perfect and now I'm applying that spackle colored spackle into the base of my um, um, fencing and that's going to give it really a lot of depth and texture and I love that the um, spackle just sorts to help to anchor that fence down to the layout and give it a base and then I can draw out that spackle to to give it more of a hilly texture and now I'm going to come back with just some shells that I had gotten from a shell store I'm just going to sprinkle those into that spackle and I'm going to use it like a mortar to adhere it to uh, adhere the shells to my page and then I ended up going back over the top of them with the gel medium just to make sure that they didn't fall off over time now I'm taking the pistachio gelato and I'm working it in down towards the base I just wanted to draw that color back down to those fences so they didn't look like they were just floating there in thin air and I picked up a couple of other shells and just adding a touches of that spackle to those as well and um, you know just it's 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 nice because it's like it's sand and it's texture and that's what the beaches of Florida are like you go from one corner you'll have a beach full of shells and then the next corner it's all white sand so that was the effect I was going for now I've cut my title out of the silhouette uh, which you can find this title in the silhouette store it's called life is better at the beach and this is where I started to struggle because I was like I really want some drippage on this so I reached for my Heidi Swap color shine in the gold lame and just spritzed it across the bottom there added my shells in with my photograph and now I'm using the gel medium to adhere my title down to my uh, layout in hindsight I wish I had colored my title before I added it to my layout but it all works out here in the end you'll see I'm taking my after the gel medium is somewhat dry which I suggest waiting for it to dry I uh, go back with the green gold uh, stampers big brush artist pen and I start coloring in around those lettering and blending with my finger I'm trying to get those uh, that color just blended into the cardstock below I'm not really worried too much about what color the actual physical title is because my idea was to come back and top it off with a darker color later I'm just trying to get the color blended in around it this time um, and, I, and I like the way it stands out but then I start looking at it going uh, I really want more color down here I told you I struggle with white space I just cannot deal with white space I don't know why I love the look of it but when I'm creating I just feel like there's a canvas here we need to fill it up so I start blending out again pulling out all of those gelatos from before the double scoop gelato with the butterscotch and the pistachio and I just keep coming back with this green gold uh, stampers big brush pen and applying layer after layer and blending and the cool thing about these products is that they're in a mix and match system where it really does not matter which product you reach for they all blend beautifully um, Faber Castell Design Memory Craft has done a fantastic job at making sure everything blends and everything works well together and no matter the medium you can always blend it so now I've decided that this is where my photo is going to stay so I'm adding a little bit of foam adhesive to the back of it I'm being careful not to add the foam adhesive to the center because I'm gonna tuck my journaling in behind and this is where I'm like I need to cover this white space up so 
I came back with the double scoop snow cone gelato and just kept applying color and using my dampened baby wipe to really work that color in and blend it around. Uh, you can add as many coats as you like, make it as dark as you want, as light as you want. I, I really wanted this to look like the ocean, so I just kept playing until I got it right. Then I came back with the glass bead glitter gel and applied a coat of that over the top of, of the blue area so that I could get the same look. And you can really see the contrast there where the gel is being applied. It's a, it's a nice white color. And then you can see the part where it's dry and you can really see the sparkle. I just love it. So um, as soon as this side dries, it's going to look like I had painted it all at one time. Then I'm going to come back with the whip spackle and apply my waves back into this area once the... Um, it all dries it's going to look just like the ocean so um, there's no need to wait for the gel medium to dry before you add the spackle uh, it it worked just fine right on top of it even though it was wet uh, just remember do not use your heat tool to dry this because uh, it will cause the gel to blister and that may not be the effect you're after. Now I'm coming back with my double scoop butterscotch and I'm gonna finish off that shoreline down at the bottom. I told you guys I can't do white space. I don't know what the problem is, but I think I did pretty good because I didn't cover this up with a ton of embellishment. So technically my painting is part of my white space. I'm also adding some of that pistachio in over um, towards the center there under my title uh, you don't really notice it that much but it does help to give a tone on tone effect and uh, blend really well in that area so now I've decided I wanted to throw in a couple of cattails and some seagrass over there on the left hand side so um, I'm just freestyling it I grabbed my stampers big brush artist pens in the May green number 170 and in the dark sepia number 175 I'm drawing those cattails right over the top of that texture um, from the uh, glass bead glitter gel and the whipped spackle and that gives them a little bit of a curved look to them and then you'll see me also introduce some of that green gold number 268 remember that your gelatos act as a prep surface down there so uh, as long as that medium is still wet I can still blend it with my fingers so you'll see me touch it just a little bit to blend it in by introducing these three green colors down or the two green colors down at the bottom I'm able to get some really nice uh, texture to my leaves on my cocktails and I think that this finishes off this corner really nicely and really kind of added that beachy effect to this then I'm going to take the residual spackle that I had left over and just tap it down there at the bottom so that it finishes off the base of my cattails just like my uh, fencing area and then I'm going to use that uh, opportunity to throw a couple more shells down there at the bottom and then I'm gonna tack those down really firm into that spackle and just because this is going to be a layout that is going to have to stand the test of Florida humidity and time I've decided to go over the top of it again with the gel medium just to secure those in place and make sure that they're not going anywhere um, so you'll see me kind of dry brush those on there and that gel medium goes on uh, in a white color but it will dry completely clear and you'll never know it was there and it also is a super strong hold now I'm going to take the gelato in the pistachio color and I'm going to add it right to that base there really working it in with my finger and then I grabbed that baby wipe and worked it in a little bit more and I'm going to spritz it with a little bit of water to just sort of help to blend it all in one more time and I love that effect how it looks now off to my title again I want to add a little more color to it so I'm grabbing my stampers big brush artist pen in the May green number 170 and I'm adding it directly over the top of my life is better at the beach title one thing I really like is that with mixed media sometimes the paper buckles well with this layout that buckling effect that I'm seeing around that title actually brings a little more realism to my uh, my painting because that's how sand really is here on Florida beaches so now let's work on our little journal spot I have this little tag that was in my stash that I've coffee stained and added a little bit of gold sparkle to and now I am tying off a piece of that netting to it and I'm gonna tuck it in behind my photograph and I love how that 
that netting just kind of peekaboos out from that title or that tag asking you to just pull on it and it's time to finish off my title a little bit more I'm taking my time being very super careful uh, one thing you did not see on camera the it didn't record is I did go over my title one more time with some gel medium and the, what that does is I was happy with my background color and my texture so it seals that back and now I'm taking that uh, Stamper's Big Brush Artist Pen in the dark sepia number 175 and since it's such a dark color if I happen to color outside the lines uh, before it dries all I have to do is take a baby wipe and wipe it off and start over since I sealed what was below with the gel medium so there's a tip for you guys uh, just be super careful when you're painting these delicate uh, letterings in hindsight, I wish I had cut my lettering out with a uh, dark color, but then I also think that by doing it this way, I'm actually making it part of the painting instead of just a piece of cardstock that is, is uh, you know, stuck to my layout. So there's a couple of different ways you probably could have done this, but once again, this layout wasn't planned. This is just working and working through the challenges as I go and embracing it all. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I wanted to start over, but I didn't. I just kept working through it. Now it's turned into one of my very favorite pieces uh, that will actually be framed and hung on my wall. So I'm really happy for that. And I um, I'm not sure if I said or not, but this is a photo of my nephew Colton who is sitting um, in the little pool, tide pool there on the edge of the water with his boogie board. We'd had a fun day at the beach that day. So thank you guys so much for joining me through this long process video. Again, don't forget to visit the blog post to get some more details and better photos and also to get a complete list of supplies that were used to make this uh this layout. I, I will put a link down below to um, all of the information that you need. Thank you so much again for hanging out with me. If you like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and share this uh, process video with a friend.